All right, we are looking at a little bit of softness for stocks as we uh, officially kick off the Wall Street week. Uh, we didn't see regular trading yesterday. The TSX, after advancing about 70 points yesterday, is losing momentum today. We're now down uh, about 180 points. Uh, certainly, we got that inflation data in Canada today, which suggested that the fight against price pressures is not over. And in the U.S., it seems like after that big run-up for stocks late last year, there's a constant debate right now as to what we will see on interest rate policy in 2024. For more in the broader market mood, let's bring in Gargi Chowdhury, who is head of iShares Investment Strategy in the Americas for BlackRock. Uh, great to see you, Gargi. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, uh, generally speaking, what's, uh, what's your sense on the mood of the markets in this early part of 2024? Sure. Good morning. It's so great to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, so the mood uh, certainly has been one of a little bit of moderation um, after that really, you know, I heard you refer to that extremely exuberant December that we had across markets, both, bo both bonds and equities. And I think if we look at the data, especially in Canada with the CPI data that we got this morning, and if we look at some of the U.S. data that we got this morning as well with the Empire data, I think this is not one of fear, certainly one where we can still see a lot of of progress in prices for both bonds and equities as the year progresses, but just a little bit of moderation and a focus on quality, which has been our theme for, for 2024, is probably going to continue. So the I guess sort of to dive into quality, because we had a conversation on this a little bit earlier in the program, uh, the idea of mm -hmm. regardless of where things go from here, trying to uh, identify companies that are not going to have issues, um, you know, bringing in, you know, uh, the profits uh, regardless of where we go from here? Yeah, so you hit the nail right on the head with that one. So regardless of how the economic environment sort of uh, evolves from here, obviously our view here is that we're not going to go into a recession, but expect to see a little bit of moderation in global growth from where we ended 2023. And obviously the Q3 G uh, GDP data across many global economies was very strong. So now uh, when we think about why quality, why quality in both fixed income and why quality in equities with something like an XQLT, there are threefold reasons to really believe that. One is that margin resiliency, which is what you were talking about. The other is the stability of earnings. I think that's really important, and obviously we're in the midst of earnings seasons now and much more on that to come, looking at which sectors are able to have that earnings growth, and technology, again, uh, hopefully is one of the areas that we expect to see that earnings growth continue. And just because something did very well last year, if it continues to have earnings growth does not mean that it cannot have another strong year. So really thinking about that margin resiliency, thinking about the cash flow yields, thinking about that uh, very strong earnings growth, those are what we look at when we think about quality. And I think that's something that at least when we are in this environment where both central banks, both in the US and in Canada are on pause for now, we think that's a really good environment for investors to firstly step out of cash and second step out of cash into quality equities and quality fixed income. Let's stay on that theme for just a second because the obsession has been with when we will see central banks cutting interest mm -hmm. rates, but we're, we're, we're essentially in this pause period now, one could argue, um, and you've looked at the historical charts on, on what generally happens in the markets during periods of pause. What, what does history tell you? Yeah, so we looked at previous pause cycles, and first of all, what we found was, you know, the average is around 10 months. And of course, that'll depend, uh, depending on the country, and that'll depend a little bit based on inflation and growth outlook. But the average, when we look at from the 1970s to now, when has there, how long has the pause been? It's been approximately 10 months. But more importantly, just to your point, investors often wait for the first rate cut to really get comfortable putting cash to work. And of course, now, with with the 1.3 trillion in uh, cash that we have seen and 8 trillion globally that are sitting in cash accounts, we think that now is the period. And again, historically, we have this beautiful chart in our um, outlook that our iShares Investment Strategy team published earlier this year in Canada. One of the charts that looks at is how much better we do in equities and in fixed income when, in, when during the pause period as opposed to during the cutting cycle 
cycle or the hiking cycle. So understanding and really believing that this pause period is one that has, number one, begun, can last for some time. I do think the expectations of rate cuts as early as March feel a little too optimistic at this juncture, especially to your point earlier with the CPI data that we saw in Canada this morning. But fear not, we're in pause, and that's a great time to own something like XBB, uh, which is that universe bond index, which did very well for you last year, and we expect that will continue to do the same. And then looking at quality stocks in equities as well.